A Helping Hand, Chapter 1, The Pilot The black and yellow slug cat found himself propelled upwards at an alarming speed. The spear falling from his paws as he shot through the water. Suddenly, air filled his lungs as he made it to the top, splashing in the water and grabbing onto the shore. Crawler's eyes adjusted to the bright sunlight as he opened them, their pale yellow color contrasting his black fur. An orange overseer from his crater was sticking out of the mossy ground in front of him, its white face displaying a pointed golden arrow gesturing up a pole. Crawler wasn't fully sure of the goal here, but supposedly he had to follow the overseer and meet a friend, who would give further instructions. The young slug cat was excited, rising to his feet and running over to the pole, leaping up and, gra and grasping it with his yellow paws and climbing up. He quickly ducked down, spotting two flashy lizards biting at each other. One had a flashing pink head and a lean, a lean black body, while the other was a dark green color with feathers across and in between its scales. Crawler had heard from Sons, as he called himself, that lizards would try to kill him for food. He quickly continued climbing, leaping from the pole to solid ground and finding himself face to face with a lean, dark pink beast. It was massive compared to him and made a buzzing sound, its black eyes glistening with the sunlight as it flew away above him. Crawler followed the fly with his eyes, both overwhelmed with the sound and excited by all the new sights around him. His friend, the orange overseer, appeared next to him with an image of a bat fly and an arrow. Crawler knew all about bat flies. They were delicious. The spotted slug cat quickly bounded after the arrow as the overseer disappeared into the green ground behind him, and Crawler climbed up the narrow pipe. It was dark, but Crawler had a trick up his sleeve. His spots glowed brightly, lighting the area with a pale golden light surrounding him, making it much easier to see through the pipe. As he re-emerged on the other side, he was met with small black creatures flitting about lazing lazily. Some of the weak bat flies collapsed to the grass, the swarm quickly flying down and consuming the body. Crawler felt a sudden pang of hunger. He was aware of the daily time limit that Suns had spoken about, and very much aware that he only had a few more minutes before he had to find shelter. With a breath, he leapt forwards to one of the rocks, snatching two bat flies in his outstretched paws. The fuzzy creatures wriggled around, flapping their small leathery wings as he lifted it towards his face, tearing into it with his sharp teeth. Bat flies didn't have much blood in their small bodies, but he felt the insides of the creature squish as it went limp. As Crawler finished the second one, the orange overseer appeared next to him from the ground. Another arrow, but a symbol he didn't quite recognize. He decided it was best to listen, since whatever journey he was on, it seemed important. Crawling through more pipes, he found himself met with another ledge, although this one didn't have any rocks to leap on and was shallow. There were vines pointing out from the ground that he could leap on, though, so he decided against searching for some other way over. The overseer clearly wanted him to go this way. Just before Crawler could leap, the overseer popped up in front of his face, a flashing golden red symbol displayed. What did that mean? While briefly wandering around Sun's home, Crawler had seen that the symbol on one of the many drawings on the walls. It was paired with strange creatures that he himself didn't quite understand, but there had been blood. The creatures had been killing each other, so what did this mean? Did it mean Crawler was in danger if he didn't cross quickly? The dark slug cat leapt forwards, grabbing onto the vine. To his surprise, it bent with his paws and he fell to the ground, feeling his fur meet the sharp rocks at the bottom. As Crawler tried to stand up, he hissed in pain as sharp thorns clamped around his arms from the plant, sticking into his fur and flesh. Crawler wasn't sure what this was, but it was pulling him around at a startling rate and he knew he had to do something. He grabbed a rock from the ground, bashing against the thorns around his arm until the thing let go. Upon being released, the plant rose away from him as the red thorns folded back to its size and it regained the appearance of a vine to grab onto. Crawler breathed heavily, looking at the plant distrustfully as the overseer next to him continued flashing the symbol. Apparently, that was what the symbol meant.